Hi, good morning. Um, I'm Parvati, and this is Sharon, and we are Team Common Sense. So let me first um, rationalize our project. Imagine the cleaner auntie who would talk to you very friendly as you study in your classroom, or the security guard uncle who would cheer me on as I ran to avoid yet another late notice for assembly. Imagine this group of people um, being verbally abused, castigated, looked upon merely on the basis of their profession, which is vital to society. And I'm not exaggerating. This is a very common occurrence, and this might be an issue that we are not really aware of. So as Parthi mentioned, um, you know, I think we are all um, aware to some extent of um, the discrimination that um, our underappreciated workers face on a daily basis in our society. And so our key, the key pain points is that, um, you know, as mentioned earlier, there's the underappreciation of certain occupations. And this actually um, sometimes doesn't just, um, isn't just confined to disrespect, but the actual mistreatment of workers in these occupations. So um, to, uh, you know, this is what our project, you know, aims to tackle. And this is our brief program overflow. So first we have an implicit association test, um, which is um, before the intervention, uh, which I'll elaborate on soon. And then we have uh, a post-program survey and implicit association test. So, so first what we're doing is we're measuring um, participants' uh, implicit and explicit biases before our actual uh, program, our intervention, as we call it. So uh, the biases that they have on both uh, on a conscious and subconscious level. Um, so for example, on a, uh, on a subconscious level, they could associate, for example, cleaners with being dirty or being um, unintelligent, for example. And on a conscious level, um, for example, you know, uh, a, a possible question we could ask them is, uh, when um, you know, I go to the hawker center to have a meal, uh, I make it a point to thank uh, the cleaner who helps clean my table. So they can you know, agree with that statement or not, like on a scale of not at all to always. So um, after that, we have um, exhibition boards, which uh, will be, um, it, it depends, right? Uh, because of COVID times, we'll either have it physically or can have like an online exhibition board as well. So it will contain brief research and uh, anecdotes on the local treatment of workers and unappreciated uh, jobs. Um, so this will serve as an initial trigger for them to you know, start thinking about this issue. Uh, and then uh, this will be followed by a video um, and discussion component. So the video will illustrate the lives of uh, workers in unappreciated jobs. And uh, this will be interspersed with prompts to facilitate discussion. So for example, an example of this would be, let's say there's a security guard, right? And um, there's a parent uh, next to the security guard who tells her child, oh, you better study, uh, you better study hard. You don't want to end up like that uncle over there, right? These are comments that uh, I think we've all, we're all aware of. And um, so a prompt you know, in that video could look like, okay, so if you're the security guard, how will you feel? How will you react? If you're a bystander, how will you react? And so on. So this will facilitate discussion among the participants. And finally, we will end off with a post-program um, survey. So this will measure, um, once again, their conscious attitudes. And we hope to see that um, you know, uh, the participants are aware of their biases to a great extent and um, you know, how they you know, manage to um, translate this in terms of like, their future actions. Yeah, so uh, the, our project's unique selling point is that we uh, base it on experiential learning. So experiential learning, it's, uh, how it's an engaged learning method where you learn by doing. So you don't just you know, listen uh, to someone talking to you about it. So there's four stages here, concrete experience, concrete experience, reflector observation, abstract conceptualization, and active experimentation. Uh, due to um, uh, time, uh, you can ask us about this in greater detail in the Q&A section. So yeah, let me just quickly wrap up. Yeah, so our target audience is mainly students because we feel like they can attend this program in a structured way via schools. And how our project is different is that um, it's, we usually face uh, or have experienced awareness campaigns where we talk about the importance of uh, these workers, but we do not target the cognitive roots of our prejudice against um, these professions, which is what we aim to do via our project. And our deliverables are basically um, the videos, the exhibition boards, and we hope to um, 
roll out the project as soon as we can once we consult the relevant organizations. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. So I guess the questions back to the panelists. Greetings. Hi. <laughs> um, good, good, good stuff you shared. I think prejudice is always um, a challenge, right, in any multicultural um, societies. I am, and, and I think going for the children is uh, in schools is going to be good. Um, what I would like to know a bit more is about, it, it seems like a, a training, you know, you have implicit, your, your, your assessments, and your intervention. Just to confirm, your assessment is contextualized to Singapore, right? Uh, yes. Because usually IETs are European-based kind of assessments. We norm. plan to create our own implicit <coughs> association so test. So you to Singapore, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, so one of the questions then would be, what does really the curriculum looks like if this is going to be a training? Um, and what kind of mindset shifts? So when we do training, we want to see shifts. Are we expecting race in awareness, change in attitudes, change in behavior, um, and what's the call to action also after the training? Thank you for your question. So um, basically, this we plan for this to be a sort of one-off session for now. Um, and they, we plan to t um, allow them to discuss such that they, can, they themselves can understand what um, their root uh, reasons are for prejudice. Because sometimes, uh, including us, we uh, have biases that we are not aware of, and that's what we intend to target, to make them aware that these biases exist within them, and why um, it might not logically make sense, because their professions are just as important, or even more important to society than other so-called prestigious jobs are. So um, by using the implicit um, association test and then doing it again, uh, we hope to see like an sh attitude shift at least in terms of their cognitive awareness of these issues. And uh, our call to action at the end of the program would be to uh, them to further um, talk to their friends about it uh, or like in the next time if they hear somebody who uh, makes such a comment, um, stop them, you know. Yeah, so this is our, it's, it's a small scale for now. It's not like a... Um, full program, it's a session, so, but hopefully if it goes well, then that's also something we're thinking about. Yeah, uh, just to add on to that. Um, so, you know, uh, we were talking about experiential learning, and actually the last part of it is uh, translated, uh, translation into concrete action, so active experimentation. So how this could look like is, you know, next time, you know, they are aware of how, like, you know, I was talking about the security guard just now. So how disrespectful, you know, such remarks are, for example. So they can make the conscious effort to not say stuff like that. Or they can call out, um, you know, maybe like their friends or family, you know, if they say stuff like that. So, um, yeah, just to add on to what she said. That's all. My question is more than how do you measure success and then attribute that back to the program that you run? Right, so um, we mentioned like uh, the uh, pre and uh, post program surveys. So that is, um, you know, we can definitely see um, if, you know, anything has changed in the, at least the conscious attitudes of the participants. And as for the implicit association test, that's more for the participants themselves to be aware of their biases. And honestly, we don't, you know, expect to see like a great difference because these are unconscious biases that you need to um, unroot over time. But we hope to see, um, we hope to uh, assess the uh, efficacy of our program through the change in um, the conscious attitudes part of it. Yeah. yeah, just to quickly add to that, it's a basically we, it's a scoring scale from one to five. So hopefully we can do like a numerical analys analysis, like a post and pre program intervention in that sense. Yeah. Um, yeah, just picking up from uh, you know, the, the point made by as well as Jesslyn. Um, so on unconscious bias, and I think you hit the nail on the head, how does one you know, gain an awareness of this? What, what are the, the kind of modalities that you're, or even the strategies you're going to use to get people to become more self-aware of their own unconscious biases, which they you know, may not be aware of? Number two, um, on the success question that Jesslyn asked, I mean, how do you see this project as moving the dial in terms of according greater dignity to this class of people and workers that you know you're trying to create awareness for 
Uh, just, uh, yeah. So uh, thank you for the question. Um, so basically, um, I mean, this is just from personal anecdote. Um, I wasn't aware that I had like gender-based stereotypes when uh, I did my implicit association test and I was shocked because I mean, I thought you know, I was a feminist and all, right? So basically, it's just the lack of awareness that this is a problem because we might think, okay, you know, we are above that, we are a progressive society and so, all, so on. And do you want to answer the next question? Oh, okay, I'll answer. Um, Sorry, I'm just looking at the time. Uh, second question was success, right? So hopefully these are the students, um, the next generation, right? So um, by making them aware that this problem exists, we hope that it elevates the importance of the issue. And um, based on that, uh, hopefully they themselves can start the conversations with their classmates, with their family members. And um, so be, uh, to kind of make them realize, uh, okay, that this is an issue that we need to address, and then we can Go for like, it's basically realization, I suppose, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah and um, so uh, could you repeat a second question? <laughs> Sorry. Right. So yeah, th uh, thanks. Uh, so the unconscious bias, like she mentioned, it uh, largely stems from ignorance, and um, I think our program, you know, helps actually humanize. Um, you know, um, underappreciated workers. And so when um, people see them in that light, like, you know, we are, we are humans and, you know, we have feelings and all that, um, it will, you know, hopefully re uh, reflect, uh, it will hopefully translate into um, a reduction of those headlines that we saw just now, right? And, yeah. How the contributions are just as valuable to society as what other people do. Yeah. All right, uh, thank you very much. Sorry, I think we took up some extra time. <laughs>